Ken Landon Buck took an art class in high school and instantly fell in love with painting. I have to paint. Even if there's no money in it, I have to do it because it's all I do. I think it, sleep it, wake it, I'm constantly thinking about art. And I know that sounds hokey, but it's true. I like to pick my models according to that essence of what they project out, because I believe what you got inside comes out, shows up in the painting. And so it excites me to that I really am bringing them to life. Some people go and they take photographs of people to remember, and I would go through hours of putting the photos out, flipping them over, and narrowing it down, narrowing it down, narrowing it down until I had my three pieces I thought were really exciting that told the story. And once I found the picture that showed the story, I said, this is it, and start drawing. I erase things, but I draw a lot until I had that moment. It's, it's all moving and it's liquid. If it's static, I redraw and redraw and redraw until it's perfect for me. I like to have a lot of information and then narrow it down. I watched a movie, <laughs> The Agony and the Ecstasy with Charlton Heston, where he played Michelangelo. Never heard of Michelangelo before, and I was just thrilled and amazed by those figures that I was seeing on the Sistine Chapel. And I'd never seen such beauty before, and I never any knew anything like that existed, and it just riveted me. I said, oh my gosh, I would love to do that. Until I started drawing, I suddenly realized I found my niche. I found what made people respect me. I found something that the rest of my life I could share. And so when I find a great muse or model, like I love dancers, I love swimmers, I find that, that beauty, I find that power, I find that uh, motion. Um, models are so important to me because they help create something that I'm not expecting. The figure I'm working on in this new painting is a swimmer. I like diagonals and the way his arm is doing, he was adjusting his goggles and I went, there's the moment. His head's down, he's not just looking at me. He's thinking about something, adjusting the goggles, getting ready to do something else. He's in the moment between, which makes me excited about the painting. So when I'm painting, I look at artists like Caravaggio, Michelangelo, Degas, Paul Cadmus, all these different people from different time periods. I look at what they've done with the figure. Sargent, it's a big idol of mine. And sometimes I really get to love a person by painting them because it becomes a very sensual thing. It's like you see them, you react, you relate, the emotional quality comes alive, they become alive, and it's hard to get into another person's mind. But if I can get somebody to look at that and stop 10 seconds more than somebody else's painting, I've got them. Each time I'm looking at a subject matter um, my, for my paintings, I'm deciding, okay, this picture speaks to me. I think it would make a great acrylic. This painting, I think, has more potential as a pastel over acrylic. This painting, I think, would be really exciting as pastel. I do a lot of mediums, so I really love the artistic process. So when I'm painting on my painting, I looked at this photo and said, this would be really nice, a large canvas. It'd be really exciting in acrylic because I can get, I like to do a lot of layering with acrylic. I use a lot of glazes. I try to keep my, my 
my acrylics to be so they look like oils. They're nice and smooth, beautiful values, and a lot of glazing. Some people like to work thick. I work thin to thick, just like an oil paint. I glaze, 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 and sometimes I put on a little thicker because that's where the area of the paint needs to be. In the colors from the boat from into the, the water. Like all this has to be knocked down because it's too white. Mm -hmm. Okay, make sense? Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you. I first started teaching years ago. They needed a summer replacement for somebody who was going on vacation, and they asked me to take over this woman's watercolor class. And then all of a sudden, I, from a career that I was going to just paint, I was suddenly teaching five classes a week, and then it morphed into six classes a week, and now I'm teaching 12 classes a week. If you got the form, that's all that matters. Okay, it that reads, makes more sense. It travels, we got it. Okay, because this to me, I mean, I'm... And every time I have a student that succeeds, I am thrilled. Walking around the room and seeing all their stuff they're doing, is thrilling to me. It's like going to the museum instead of getting depressed. I go home and say, I gotta work harder. So I like that idea that I can share that with my students and say, I started out with stick figures. And they go, you couldn't have. And I said, yes, I did. So if I can do it, you can do it. And they always laugh at that one, but it's true. I'm living proof that if you want something bad enough, you can achieve it.